We want to begin this morning with some big news out of Northern California. This is the image that started the alarm. Water rushing over a giant gaping hole. In 2005, environmental groups filed a motion to urge officials to reinforce the spillway. The problem all stemming from the Orville Dam in Northern California. Now at record levels and in danger of spilling over after a series of storms. We are expecting another storm here to fill that reservoir and put more pressure on that emergency spillway. So they want to get as much water as they can before that next storm arrives midweek. These are the remains of Owens Lake. This used to be the largest freshwater lake in the U.S. before it was diverted to feed the unquenchable thirst of Southern California in a power play by LA's elite. We have traveled from Colorado to ski the Sierra Nevada range of California from south to north. This is ground zero of the ongoing battle between climate change and water in the West. We're here to ask, how will our story be told? We're looking at you, skiers and snow lovers. We woke up to the sound of dozens of semis rambling past your campsite at dawn. Where are these trucks going? They are dumping countless loads of gravel onto a dust trap to contain the toxic dust that was previously trapped underneath the lake. Owens Lake is home to over 24,000 sprinklers to keep down the arsenic-laden dust that blows across the country, polluting with disturbing frequency. Will this be Lake Tahoe in 50 years? Certain spots, man, you can smell it. I don't like to drive on the lake bed no more. When I first started this job, I thought it was cool. But then after I Googled it and I saw how it used to look and all the beauty is gone, I'm like, shit, man, this is just, it's pitiful, bro. They told me that the arsenic levels out there are pretty high. And when uh, the wind blows, we gotta mask up. Forget all this landscaping shit. This is like putting a band-aid on the stab wound. What's that gonna do? <laughs> Flood it. Make it a, a lake again. Let's get it back right so we can go water skiing and shit. So off we went in search of snow. This had been a record year for precipitation in the Sierras, and many pundits would say that the seven-year drought was over. With climate change making extreme drought and flood years more common, we wanted to hear from a long-time local skier about the highs and lows of existence in the Sierra. We met up with Bernie Rosso, a mammoth local who said he'd show us around. We followed him on a gnarly dirt road until about 3 a.m. when my car couldn't make it any further. We turned back, camped under the stars, and set out on a tour in the morning. Off. Except 20 minutes later, Bernie had raced ahead of us and was gone. None of us had ever been ditched like that in the middle of a ski tour. We had no map, no idea where we were going, and we were worried our local guide might have been hurt. But we were stoked to be back on snow.
We left Mammoth and headed north to Oroville, where the nation's tallest dam had almost been defeated by a quickly melting snowpack and failed engineering. Now, after years of drought, the dam didn't have enough capacity to store all the water cascading down from the mountains, posing a serious threat to those living downstream. We met with Oroville resident and Mandarin farmer, Lou Ledigiani, to find out more about what had happened in February. It was a real hollow feeling when your cell phone, your telephone, your hardline telephone, and the news on TV came on all of a sudden and said, this is not a joke, get out of town, you got 30 minutes. And a lot of people slept on the side of the road for days until they were told, well, okay, you can go back home now. We'll produce on a good year like this year coming up, should be a really good year. We'll produce uh, upwards of 150 tons of fruit. And we have approximately eight to 10 weeks to pick it, pack it, and sell it. The south fork of the Feather River is the conduit that brings the water from high in the mountains down to uh, our farm. And we are as efficient as we can get with today's technology. Uh, we use tensiometers to monitor um, moisture content in the soil. We irrigate with micro emitters. Those are little, little tiny squirters that create uh, a pattern that looks like the spokes of a bicycle. The State Department of Water Resources will have to spill more water because there's all this snowpack up in the hills. Water in storage is, is a wonderful insurance policy and it's an insurance policy that says that in case of a drought we got water behind a dam that will take care of us without that insurance policy you couldn't have 40 million people in this state the snowpack is california's largest reservoir and it's already in grave danger the orville dam is the second biggest in california yet it doesn't even come close to capturing what the snowpack does every winter Climate change not only threatens communities with drought, but with the ultimate cruel irony of a 30-foot wall of water. There's so much we can do to prevent these horrors from being inflicted upon our society. At the front lines of the battle are people like Hala Rezak, who is changing the way people get their water in San Diego. We here in San Diego, since 1994, we have added about um, 400,000 more people and our water use has gone down. And that is truly because of the conservation and how many people are, are conserving. But we recognize that we cannot continue having people to conserve because people still need to use water and we need to plan for the future. Just like we recycle aluminum or paper or other products, it is time to recycle water and make sure that we don't waste it. It's a very precious resource. In order for me to go and convince somebody that they would be drinking recycled water, they're like, well, why? You, I mean, we have water, what's the problem? Every time I put on the faucet, there's water coming out. So that's where the education will. Let me tell you where your water comes from. Let me tell you what the problems are. And let me tell you that we need to here in San Diego be smart about it because the future does not really guarantee us having this supply of water continuing with all the challenges that are going on. What we have as skiers is passion for winter. We have the voice and the hunger for change. Let's harness all we've got as a community and show the world how much we love winter.
Let's tell her story the way we want it to be told. As skiers with more than just a conscience, but the drive to take action in every way, shape, and form. Let's lead the way for a better future. We've tasted the endless joy that deep snow provides, and we know we can be a force for positivity in the world. We won't stop until our winters are here to stay.